Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope all of you are doing great. Today we're gonna discuss in this video Cisco ACI packet forwarding and this is part 2 video as you know part 1 is already completed and believe me this video gonna fully informative uh, use information in this video so don't miss out this video right so without uh, wasting more time let's get started as you know uh, the part 1 is with uh, scenario 1 right and as I said that uh, entire this series will be followed by the four scenarios, right? And the first scenario is already completed, which might reflect in the I button. You can check out from there, right? And then come here for the second scenario, right? And in last video, I said uh, with the second scenario, but what I thought uh, uh, the third scenario is more more important for you, uh, which, which help you to understand the second scenario as well, right? Uh, so we'll follow the third scenario where source leave does not know the destination and that is in spine proxy. So our focus today is on scenario third. All right. So let's go to the scenario three. Uh, this is leaf spine architecture diagram, which I also follow in previous video also. All right. In previous video, you might see uh, that how the leaf switches uh, learn the endpoints and how many type of endpoints are there, right? And how uh, uh, one physical uh, servers gets connect in the front panel and how they learn and how they do build LST. What is LST? LST nothing but a local station table, which is subset of your endpoint table. So what is endpoint table? Endpoint table consists with all the information related to your endpoints, right? Where IP interface, MAC address, all the information is there, right? So that's what I have uh, written over here, endpoint table, right? So each uh, lip switch contain one endpoint table. Apart from this uh, uh, learning this endpoint table, Cisco uh, lip switches, all the lip switches having another responsibility to send the endpoint in table information to the any of the spine switches, right? So that, that's I'm, I'm showing you uh, using one animations. So what they do, they update the same endpoint informations to the any of the spine switches with the help of Cooper protocol. So once this uh, spine switch receives the endpoint information, what they do? they extends within themselves to get up to date the latest information they have always right and using all the informations what they do they make a database for all leaf switch and all endpoint informations right and this here i have uh, written that it's a db right let me explain over here this db sometimes you might heard that uh coop db Sorry, CoopDB. CoopDB is nothing but a council of Oracle protocol database. Sometime you might heard or you might call it a spine proxy DB, right? Sometime you might heard as a global DB or global station table. Sometimes it is also called for the uh, spine proxy so in the three name you might heard this thing but uh, concept is that it's a, a centrally uh, database for the spine proxy where all the endpoint informations or uh, all lip switch in endpoint information gets stored and make it one db right and this spine switch never comes to a lip switch to collect the data the lip switch responsibility to send this data with the help of Cooper protocol to send this uh, 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 spine uh, proxy to the spine switches and they make a spine proxy database right hope it is informative right and, and there is one exception when uh, the spine comes to uh, a lip switch to get some update or to give uh, push some db right and a spine proxy uh, or a spine uh, switches never uh, learn the endpoint detail uh, using the data plane all the leaf switches are responsible to send the information to the uh, centrally uh, or database, right? Or uh, spine switches. Whatever new switch uh, get learned by the leaf switch, first he has to update to his master. Here is always you can think of the central master switch, 
right? Now, what happened after our learning this thing? Let me explain that part also. Now, what was our scenario? Our scenario is, uh, what if the, uh, the uh, uh, destination in another leaf and that the, the, that leaf switch don't know that part, right? Here, I'm going to explain you this endpoint wants to communicate with these endpoints, right? But thing is that this leaf switch don't know the destinations, right? What will happen? Let me explain one by one. Keep in mind, huh? focus this slide, which is very important for you. Now, initially, this uh, endpoint uh, generate one packet where the uh, uh, header uh, source MAC, destination MAC, source IP, and the destination IP. So, uh, destination IP, he knows it might be app server, right? And it might be DB server. And during the configuration, we map with this IP address. That's what we know the uh, MAC address. Uh, sorry, IP addresses. It's my bad. And for the in the MAC field, it will be broadcast IP, MAC broadcast IP ad, MAC broadcast uh, uh, number, right? We all know f dot f dot f dot something like that. That is will be that that will be treated as a broadcast MAC. As this endpoint don't know the uh, destination MAC addresses. Now. Uh, I'll try to uh, concentrate in this part. Once this packet goes to leaf switch, right? A leaf switch receive this packet, all right? Analyze the packet, right? Then he says the destination. Then immediately he says, I don't know where is the destinations, right? He don't know because he don't know where is the destination even. But he has one solutions, right? He says, go to spine proxy. I am giving you the Anycast TAF IP address. He might help you as he have all the informations, right? So uh, in spine proxy, uh, do use one concept that is no unknown, right? So he, uh, the spine proxy know everything, right? So that's what this uh, switch uh, redirect to the Anycast uh, spine proxy so that it goes to a uh, spine and he might help him. So what happened? After receiving this packet, he is guiding to go to spine proxy, right? Now, what packets looks like in that case? In that case, the, your original packet goes to inner header and that entire packet encapsulated and make another outer header, right? What is the outer header? You can see there is a separate uh, source MAC address with the outer header, destination MAC address with the outer header, source IP and destination IP, right? Now, this is very important and interesting. Source IP is the tape address, tape one. Already I explained every every switch having one uh, uh, tunnel endpoint, right? And the tunnel endpoint having one IP addresses. So as this switch, as this leaf switch is sending this traffic, his source would be tape address. All right, and what would be the destination? Destination is the Anycast tape address, which is here, right? Which you have already configured during initial setup of the ACI, where you put the Anycast uh, IP addresses, right? Now, this packet, as this outer header makes the all the uh, source and destinations, here you have to understand this packet belongs to the your this section right and as this uh, this this uh, packet travel with the logical sections for that you need another header right this helps to you to send over here right another header comes over here that is the vxlan right so what is uh, vxlan here uh, there is a uh, two uh, v, uh, vnid id field right if it is l2 traffic Keep in mind this, which is uh, very important. It might ask in interview another part. If it is L2 traffic, that then then it is a uh, uh, bridge domain VNID. If it is L3 traffic, then it is VRF VNID. Right? You are assuming it is L3. Sorry, oh, it's my bad. It is L3 VNID. Here it is, right? So once this uh, packet get the destination, what it does, it sends to the spine proxy. So once the spine receives this uh, packet 
and he says uh, in the outer header that destination is by himself right then what he uh, does he receives the packet right receives the packet and he checks the inner header where is the actual destinations right then he check the inner header then receive the packet then he cross check where is the destination from the inner header and he check it is in lift 3 right from his uh, sprint proxy db coop db anything you can say right and what it does it generate one packet in this packet what 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 uh, uh, changes is there only destination ip address in the outer header right this inner header is still uh, the same right now what is the destination ip he look up uh, from his uh, db and he came to know that uh, this destination this destination ip right in the inner header which is uh, located in the leaf 3 in the tape 3 right then he generate this packet then he sends to that particular leaf 3 so once this leaf receives the packet he check the inner header also right and he check from where it is coming right so he knows everything where it is coming and what is the destination right this is the destination ip then it receives the packet then immediately create one dv make one update in the endpoint table right then he decapsulate that uh, outer header then sends the actual packet to the destinations right so this leaf switch leaf 3 once it is received and check the inner header i came to know the destination detail right from where it is coming the source detail right then he immediately make an entry in the endpoint table over here from where it is coming the endpoint one right this is endpoint one this is ip address right and this is ip address he store the interface which interface he always store in the global uh, interface that is the tape one right hope it is informative if you are enjoying or like this session now thing is that here i have explained uh, in separate uh, info and table but thing is that this entire table is a sim single table right in point table yes uh, this is his uh, remote endpoints and this is his local endpoint but all this together is the endpoint table for the leaf 3 switch right now after receiving this uh, 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 endpoint table after receiving this packet by the endpoint 2 what they, he do he has to reply right how they do reply Again, the similar way he will generate a packet source destination source mac destination mac with the payload then he sends he generate the packet then he sends to the leaf switches now leaf switch what it does it check the remote endpoint right where is the your remote endpoint because already he know from the source right why i have to send then what it does it generate the an, another encapsulation because he has to travel over here right he has to travel in the vxlan uh, tunnel then again he has encapsulate with the outer header where just notice this part source would be tape 3 right this is the tape 3 and destination would be tape 1 this is the tape 1 right tape interface because he already know from where the request came to him then what he will do he will directly send the packet to that leaf switch right it's very nice right he uh, this is uh, this packet no need to travel again to the central db because he already given the information all information and his role is that to inform you once no need to come every time right and build your table remote endpoint table right likewise so once he receives he, uh, then, then after receiving this thing, what he learned? He learned from where it is coming, right? It's coming from the source, and the source, all that source detail is here, right? So after receiving, what it will do? It will make his own entry in the endpoint table. So this is how both the switch make the remote endpoint detail, right? Both the switch. 
build their endpoint table right and this is uh, this is a remote endpoint i would say and this is local endpoint informations this is a remote endpoint as i told you and this is oh sorry it's my bad this is local end point information right so this is how they uh, build their uh, remote endpoint uh, detail and local endpoint detail and this is how uh, they forward the packet right hope it is informative and and you have already enjoyed this video right <clears throat> now uh, now question uh, should come to your mind that is what if the spine don't know the destination right the packet this endpoint this guy sends to the spine but spine don't know spine, uh, spine uh, check the, uh, the the entire all the database right all the entry but he don't found if he don't know the destination what will happen this is question should come to your mind now i'm going to explain um, what will happen now let me explain this guy generate one packet right and it comes to lip switch now lip switch don't know and that's what he sends to the spine proxy or to the spine right so once this guy receives he check that it's not present in his uh, database he look up and he not he is not founding this uh, information right where in this packet the uh, unknown destination ip right it is unknown for everyone even for the uh, source even for the uh, spine switches all right so once he receives what it will do it will drop the packet the initial first packet he will draw then what it will it will do again he will generate another packet right with the unknown destinations ip for him also right and this packet which is generated by the spine is called as a arp clean arp clean packet so what arp clean packet does it's forward a broadcast to every lip switch whichever is available right there might be multiple switch spine switch it is also sent to everyone right this arp clean packet because now in this situations if you having one silent host who don't respond right who is silent now this this uh, spine switch send a arp clean request to everyone to know who is the guy who is sleeping right so to know that he will broadcast to every lip switch with the destination ip now once this lip switch receives the packet with the destination please con uh, concentrate in this part once the lip switches all the lip switches receives the unknown destination ip one uh, broadcast from the uh, lip switch uh, spine switch unknown destination ip right and this lip switch check if this unknown ip address belongs to ip or subnet belongs to subnet which is configure his bridge domain if it is configure what it will the lip switch do it will broadcast to his every switch every port right every port right if it is not belongs to uh, belongs to his configured bridge domain uh, subnet then it will not broadcast anywhere it will stop over here only now if this uh, lip switch having configured that subnet in that bridge domain right right the unknown ip belongs to if the unknown ip comes to the uh, bridge domain uh, if the unknown ip comes and that that same uh, sub network is configured in his bridge domain what this lip switch do it will forward 
to every port right to check who is sleeping <laughs> who is not responding since long that is the silent host so once this request receives this guy who is sleeping since long who is who is treating over here as a um, silent host he will reply back then yes i am here i'm sleeping i am the silent and he receives the this lip switch receives that request right then he make another entry for him now next packet once comes from the uh, any 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 source who query for this destination he will send to that particular lip switches right so this is how arc glin works right when our clean box if there is any silent host who is not responding who is sleeping since long and to identify that guy there is mechanism run by the spine proxy that is called a r p glen right r glen and the r glen only works for the for the l3 packet not for the l2 if it is l2 request goes from here it will discarded it will not responded it will only work for the l3 topic if it is l3 topic request to the spine then only uh, uh, if it is spine don't know then only he uh, first packet will drop and the generator arp clean packet broadcast to every lip switches except the uh, source lip switches right broadcast and if it is that that unknown destination ip subnet is created in that particular lip switch bridge domain then only he will broadcast to other port to understand who is sleeping who is a silent host and he will get a response from that guy and he will response to spine right and spine spine make a uh, uh, entry on his database so this is how the situation will happen when the uh, this kind of situation will happen when only when anything leave uh, spine don't know the destination and is it it most of the time happen with the silent host right hope you enjoy the video now second thing is uh, second question it should come in your mind that is how decide to send all to spine proxy here i have show you with the animation mickey mouse mickey mouse you know not showing uh, sending this packet to any guest there must be any something who is deciding to do a spine proxy right that i am going to explain where we are deciding the spine proxy we have to send to spine proxy if we don't know if the lip switch don't know anything about the destination then only it will uh, send to spine switches to to follow the spine spine proxy mechanism all right the where and when we are decide decision or configure this part that i am going to explain you but before that uh, to understand that thing you have to understand one thing the forwarding component i am going to explain the for all the forwarding component right so let's understand the forwarding component then i will show you how to decide to send spine proxy right so let's go to the forwarding component right so uh this is the uh, one one uh, single diagram through which i will try to explain you uh, what is the uh, forwarding component basically right so already you were aware the tenant vrf vd epg and ep right here uh, try to understand uh, there is one epa epb c d and e right so uh, these are the eps which is belongs to uh, different epgs and different uh, bds right now you might ask that if if uh, the uh, lip switch store their data or store their information to the uh, endpoint table then why it is needed thing is that we store but whenever the forwarding comes in picture you just think this kind of situations all the l2 right l2 forwarding lookup happen in the bridge domain like a traditional like i said very simple or very easy right are similar to uh, legacy uh, lookup 
if it is l2 lookup then it goes to breeze domain if it is l3 lookup then it is goes to vrf table and vrf uh, scope is the vrf vnid which is l3 already i i might uh, told you in uh, previous slide and if it is uh, l2 then uh, it is bd uh, vnid right this is how the lookup uh, uh, happen in an lips mine architecture but here the store a uh, little bit different in a uh, endpoint table where your uh, arp and mac uh, table uh, works right and but for the forwarding they do forward or lookup like likewise right always keep in this picture in your mind whenever i talk about the forwarding where your all the l3 related information would be stored in the vrf right and here your sbi will also be considered that is also going to be stored over here for ep1 your sbi bdi uh, bd bridge domain uh, sbi is uh, this right 254 now i am going to explain how uh, they communicate and how they look up in the forwarding table right uh this is the diagram through which you can understand a uh, few part like first is that if the ep1 communicate with ep sorry uh, it's my bad it's a ep a want to communicate with the ep b right and they are in the same subnet they are in the same ep g right and their default gateway is this which is located to uh, configure in uh, bridge domain right all right now <clears throat> uh if if uh, this guy wants to uh, communicate the ep wants to communicate uh, to the ep b what is happen it's a just a l2 uh, lookup it goes to a uh, bridge domain uh, no need to uh, do a uh, routing and uh as it's a l2 uh, lookup it's happen in the uh, bridge domain within within uh, bridge domain and and only mac uh, mac will work over here and it's it's lookup in the bridge domain it's very simple for that uh, there is no uh, extra uh, configuration is needed now what if the ep1 sorry ep a wants to communicate with the ep c whose mac address is ccc right what will happen let's see again it will be uh, l2 lookup because all are in uh, same subnet right uh, though uh, though they are uh, in different uh, epg but they are in uh, same uh, bridge domain same broadcast domain that's what there is no l3 there is no l3 lookup always l2 lookup and for that only difference is that you need a one contract right hope oh, uh, it is uh, clear to you right now what if this ep a wants to communicate with the different subnet ep d who is belongs to different subnet different network all together right what will happen in that case let's understand that part also yeah which i forgot to mention it is uh, l2 and it's, it's same like earlier uh, even ep g it's different only contact is needed as it's different now uh, our concern is uh, is that if ep a wants to communicate ep d which is belongs to different network in that case what will happen it will go to a uh, uh, default gateway bridge domain but l3 lookup will happen in the vrf as vrf having all the entry as i show you in the previous slide in the picture please keep in mind always in that case it's it's in same epg right in same bridge domain both ip are in same bridge domain though though they are in different subnet that's what they need a l3 lookup right so for the l3 lookup uh, the destination mac default uh, gateway to the sbi mac so uh, as it's a different uh, subnet it goes to uh, uh, bridge domain uh, sbi and sbi will uh, sends to the vrf l3 lookup from there it will goes to uh, bridge domain sbi right uh, for the epd then from there it will communicate to the ep uh, uh, epg3 all right but here again as it's a uh, different epg for that you need a contract 
right but it's a l3 communications right if it is l3 traffic you always it's ip lookup and that is happen on the vrf uh, segment right destination mac address hits the default gateway to the sbi uh, sbi and i even uh, even though they are in same uh, ip uh, ips right but uh communication will happen in the l3 right all right now what if the endpoint a wants to communicate to this guy which is in different bridge domain the same as earlier it will go to the sbi and having one l3 lookup then goes to a different bd right then it's uh, use the contract then reach to the epg4 from there it will communicate to the ep poop e right um, but whenever l3 lookup it will happen always in the vrf segment right and if this guy uh, ep a wants to communicate epf which is belongs to different vrf altogether it's not possible in that case you need a vrf linking right it's a shared service kind of thing right it's different but still i i try to explain over here in this slide we are going to learn pervasive gateway right so what is pervasive gateway and uh, pervasive subnet that i'm going to explain in this here in this slide so pervasive gateway is nothing but whenever you are configuring one subnet under the bridge domain and during the configuration even i also uh, show you how to configure uh, in bridge domain where i have explained how to configure so in there whenever you are configuring one uh, subnet right and uh, putting one slash 24 or something like that uh, we are we are making a subnet then this subnet or this network goes to your pervasive uh, route network it is going to routing network and that ip is uh, will be treat as a pervasive gateway right and whenever you configure one uh, secondary ip addresses like you do configure in sbi secondary ip addresses that will also treat as a pervasive gateway and pervasive network right let me uh, you can go through the right uh, explanations still let me clear uh, with another scenario right so earlier uh, in our network what happened uh, in legacy network there is core switch right in the core switch all the l3 uh, stuffs happen over there routing and other thing so we need to create uh, all the sbi over here right sbi 1 2 3 and all the switches get communicate to this uh sbi right but in SCI uh, infrastructure, right, list point architecture, here what happened? L3, sorry, uh, L2 as well as L3 uh, functionality happen in the leaf switch itself. So in that case, what will happen? We'll configure uh, subnets uh, in bridge domain, right, and that will uh, reflect each uh, uh, each sub uh, each uh, leaf switch, right, and that subnet whatever we are going to configure that will reflect this is how it will reflect if any uh, ep is connected to one uh, lip switch and that lip switch uh, network will be automatically installed in this uh, uh, lip, uh, in this lip switch if if this lip switch comes under that particular base domain right suppose here uh, uh, one example is given over here that is the uh, endpoint one and endpoint uh, d endpoint sorry again it's my bad endpoint a and endpoint d endpoint a and endpoint d if uh, these two uh, eps uh, or epgs rather configure under this switch and this switch uh, comes under one bridge domain right bridge domain one in that case both the network will be installed over here right and slash 24 will be treated as a pervasive network right and uh, 0.254 or uh, here it would be one sorry it's my bad please consider it uh, one this one will be considered as a pervasive gateway right so this is how it will be treated if anything is not uh, connected any ep is not connected over here in that case nothing going to be installed over here any pervasive gateway any pervasive uh, network right but what if uh, related to a uh, contract right if there is any contract 
all right if there is any contract in that case what will happen the pervasive uh, gateway will not going to install but pervasive route going to be installed in that particular switch right this uh, uh, it will be installed uh, vice versa right this network going to be uh, installed over here and this network going to be installed over here not SBI keep in mind huh? this line please consider uh, SBI not going to be installed but network the pervasive route will be installed so pervasive uh, route and network uh, gateway is uh, very similar to SBI uh, gateway and whatever the network we are creating that will treat over here as a pervasive route right to reach for that particular uh, bridge domain SBI uh, uh, network we have created that uh, uh, network will be treated as a route over here all right all right hope it is uh, informative now we'll understand uh, in a subsequent slide that is uh, forwarding mode in bridge domain this is very important for you uh, please try to understand because here i will explain this uh, five uh, forwarding mode in under the bridge domain which is most important chapter in this entire series right so here uh, you can see there is five mode l2 uh, unknown unicast l3 unknown uh, multicast and the multicast uh, destination flooding and the r flooding and unicast routing this five right so i am going to explain one by one uh each uh each, each, each forwarding mode unicast routing mode this i'm going to start with this right so let me take a separate page to make you understand uh, the unicast routing right so we have two option unicast routing enable another one is the if we disable unicast routing that we'll understand over here now uh, try to recall one thing in earlier uh, legacy l3 switches what we have to do that we uh, need to run one command that is ip routing right hope you remember So once we run this command, this this switch uh, enable the routing. It's it's cap then then it's capable to make the routing within different network. So with this command, we are making this switch IP routing enabled, so that different network can get communicate each other. You can think the similar way, the same thing over here, but bit difference. Let me explain that part also. So. Uh, let me take another pen yeah now here uh, if we uh, disable first understand if we disable what will happen what the impact would be right this is your uh, bridge domain right and under that what you did you disable the unicast routing now under the bridge domain if you configure subnets allowing the uh, gateway the subnets network which is called a pervasive gateway pervasive network the both the network uh, one and two not gonna push to the endpoint group right it will not push any endpoint group whatever you created under this bridge domain right nothing going to uh, post or nothing going to advertise your bridge domain apart from this if you disable this your bridge domain won't be able to create any endpoint table right so you are making incapable to learn the subnets from your ARP, uh, broadcast something like that from there it cannot learn ip addresses so you are making purely l2 your switch if you disable the unicast starting right now if you enable what will happen if you enable in that case uh, whatever endpoint you are uh, making part of this endpoint group 
they can easily communicate each other with the routing protocol whereas if you disable then also then also it can communicate if it is the l2 communications because uh, without running this command or without uh, dis uh, without enabling this thing you are making the your bridge domain as a l2 right if you enable this uh, 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 unicast routing it is your bridge domain making purely l3 so that it can get route it can communicate with other networks and it can advertise whatever uh, configure subnet over here and it, your bridge domain or your leaf switch can learn the uh, ip addresses from the data plane also right so these are the disadvantage advantage about there so uh, if if your uh, 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 endpoints are purely layer to communication wanted to communicate in that case you need to uncheck right but if you want to uh, communicate uh, routing like a different subnet or a routing you want in that case you have to enable definitely otherwise you cannot learn ip addresses you cannot uh, advertise ip addresses you cannot communicate with different IP, uh, network right so hope it is un uh, informative so uh, l2 and l3 if you enable and disable this is how you can understand even if you have work with legacy uh, network in legacy network uh, in legacy l3 switches we need to run one comma ip uh, routing the same thing uh, you can uh, uh, compare with your enabling the unicast routing you are making l3 enable unicast routing if you are making enable if you have disable then your bridge domain your broadcast domain the single broadcast domain making purely l2 all right there is uh, no l3 communication will be going to happen all right hope you understand right so these are the option you can understand if we enable or disable l3 uh, routing right so this part is clear right now uh, we'll understand the l2 unknown unicast so there is uh, two option in l2 unknown unicast right that i'm going to explain let me take another black page here we'll understand uh, what it says l2 unknown unicast right as the name says unknown and under this uh, l2 un always keep in mind l2 l2 uh, unknown unicast there is two option you will get one is a uh, flood right another one is the hardware proxy this two option you are going to get under your bridge domain whenever you configure the l2 unicast right and that is l2 and that is also unknown before that we have to understand uh, in in earlier network uh, in legacy network how the unicast get handled right so let's understand with one simple diagram just let's say this two switch and they're connected each other and in first switch one this is uh, switch one this is uh, switch two uh, and switch one connected one host one two and switch two there is also a few host is get connected right now in this situation if any host wants to communicate right and the destination is unknown and that is also l2 what happened in that case let me take another color yeah so what happened in this case it sends to the switch first then it's check his own cam table right and within, within this cam table he checks if he is not get that uh, uh, destinations unknown destinations because it is unknown for uh, both the switches what it does it will broadcast send the request to every packet right then it goes here here this host and this host right now if if the unknown destination match with this uh, host let me draw other arrow also because it is also uh, broadcasting uh, to them 
so l2 uh, you just rather now uh, if if uh, this was uh, not the right post this is not right this is not right this is not right if this is the right for unknown host which is uh, this host is looking for right host a is supposed to and host b now this guy this b will uh, responds against this request and in legacy uh, network this is how it's happen but unnecessarily uh, there is multiple uh, request goes to other other host also which is connected in this uh, broadcast domain so this is how all uh, in legacy network uh, gets handled the l2 unknown unicast but in aci infrastructure here is bit different how it is let me uh, show you with the uh, leaf spine architecture let me show you right they are connected criss cross manners this is top one is the your spine switches this is spine 2 spine 1 this is leaf 1 leaf 2 leaf three leave four in that case if this host host a wants to communicate one destination uh, l2 and that is also unknown for everyone right in that case once this packet comes to uh, this switch right this uh, leaf one switch there is uh, there is a uh, two option he will get right first option is the flood for the l2 unknown unicast second option is the hardware proxy now if you uh, if you enable the flood what it will do it will behave like uh, a legacy network it will flood everywhere right within the bridge domain unnecessary which is not required at all still it will flood everywhere right now let me a bit clear the screen so if you choose the uh, flood it will unnecessary flood but uh, if you uh, choose the option hardware proxy in that case what will happen this packet received by the left switch and he will look up his own uh, local uh, lst table or uh, endpoint table right whether this unknown entry is there or not if it is not there from there it will understand the destination ip address right and it will sends to the spine switches to handle this unicast traffic right and this unicast traffic what it will do it will uh, send a specific uh, it will look up uh, his own database and it will send to that particular destinations which is connected as a host b because host b is connected and he already uh, reported his endpoint table to that particular spine right so spine having this information so what we are doing we are uh, 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 saying or we are instructing to uh, leap one that make one hardware proxy enable if any packet comes to you don't broadcast it minutely send to spine spine knows everything right then spine will take the decisions right as he knows everything so here uh, l2 unknown unicast we can handle two way one way is the legacy way that is uh, we can flood everywhere within the bridge domain another one is the hardware proxy or rather spine proxy whenever we are choosing the hardware proxy it will act as a spine proxy whatever i have explained uh, a bit uh, ago right so this is how it will work now uh, thing is that so if if one drawback is there in the in the hardware proxy what is the drawback as i told you for the l2 traffic it is not work for the arp clean right i have already explained you the arp what is arp clean for the silent host detections so if you choose the hardware proxy if you choose the spine proxy in that case arp clean will not work arp clean only work for the l3 traffic so in that case the drawback is that if you are having any l2 communication or if you are having a, a much more a silent host such kind of application you have such kind of a demand you have in your network in that case 
you always you have to go with the flood right because you don't know where is your silent host where is your uh, destination mac address right whenever you are sending the request to spine if you choose the spine proxy or hardware proxy it will drop again and again because it's a l2 uh, uh, traffic and for the l2 traffic the orglin is not blocked right yeah so uh, let me clear it right so l2 unknown unicast will learn L3 uh, uh, multicast uh, is pending and the multicast flooding is pending. Multicast flooding I am not going to explain in this video it might take more time. So I will focus the L3 unknown uh, L3 unknown uh, multicast flooding and the R flooding right. Now I am gonna uh, discuss uh, the topic R flooding right. This portion I'm going to uh, make you clear, right? So before that, uh, let me take a page for you, right? So uh, R flooding, right? Few times, and there is one checkbox what we seen just right now. There is only option you can check it, so it's get enabled and keep the uncheck so that it can be disabled. All right now uh, let's discuss uh, the what is R basically in traditional network before uh, going to our uh, SCI network right we have to understand how the R flood uh, work in traditional network so in that case uh, let me uh, draw something right just uh, let's say this is one switch right this is supposed to L2 one switch switch it could be L2 or L3 any, anything it could be right now uh, host is connected on that switch right multiple host yeah so these are the uh, host or uh, these are the server or these are the user you can say so initially what happened like here uh, if, if this user having IP address with the 192.x.x.1 right slash 24 now if this host wants to uh, communicate another host which is located over here 192.x.x.2 right so as this host I would say this is the host 1 and this is the host 4 so this host 1 wants to communicate with the host 4 now what will happen this host 1 don't know uh, the host for MAC address right so in that case you will uh, generate the ARP request what is ARP request what this frame will contain you have to understand one field would be a uh, source IP right another field would be uh, a destination IP another field would be a source MAC another field would be destination MAC right and this is the rest of payload now he knows the source IP he knows the destination IP but here he don't know the destinations MAC address so what would be that in that case as we know the destination broadcast MAC address would be f dot f dot f so on right then dot f dot f dot something like that so now it is a broadcast MAC. What will happen? This this uh, this host will generate one ARP request and that will send to that particular interface, right? Now what this switch will do over here? He will broadcast the same thing to everywhere, everywhere except his own interface. He will broadcast. Now what will happen? This request goes to uh, this host, 
this could be host 2 right so once this host receives the packet what he will do oh it's not my it's not my ip it's not my request so get out from here this host also uh, receives this broadcast with the destination ip uh, 192.x.x.2 uh, in that case uh, this host 3 is supposed to he will say it's not for me get out from here he will discard the packet now this host what will this host 4 will check and see destination ip is his own what he will do he will receive the packet then he will reply back to the host 1 with the unicast request via this switch definitely uh, unicast request right so here why what we uh, what happened actually so in last we got the success but already we have uh, broadcast everything right uh, uh, we uh, utilize the all resources we unnecessary we broadcast everywhere right so this is this is uh, should not be expected right as we know uh, cisco aci uh, uh, don't underestimate any broadcast so you cannot uh, underestimate any single broadcast you have to take it minutely so we understand how the broadcast uh, art uh, broadcast work in traditional network or legacy network now we'll understand how it's work in the sci right so let me clear this place yeah no no, no. let's understand with this leaf spine architecture how they do handle the art request right so these are the spine hope you can correlate with the diagram right so these are the uh, uh, leaf switches right all are connected uh, in crisscross manners definitely and always uh, keep in mind one thing in SEI infrastructure SEI uh, um, uh, architecture there is no uh, leaf to leaf connectivity there is no uh, uh, spine to spine connectivity whatever the connection will happen it's a leaf to spine always right now <clears throat> here we have to understand one thing that is if any 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 host is connected in uh, leaf switch one right and any host is connected to the leaf four right now this guy wants to communicate this host let me put it host one this is host two this is trying making time right so uh, host one wants to wants to communicate over here now again the same same thing happened uh, but keep in mind this part also see uh, your host don't, don't care whatever connection or whatever network you are using it could be very smart it could be very expensive it could be very efficient don't bother this host right it's it's nothing for him it's always broadcast our broadcast you always do now you will handle right you, you should handle whatever the way you will handle it could be any l2 switch traditional switch it could be uh, sci uh, uh, smart switch right now here again this host wants to communicate over here over here to host 2 right he knows his uh, ip address right but he don't know the mac address in this field again the same same thing source ip destination ip source mac destination mac now source mac he knows but destination mac he don't don't know right now once this this packet goes to leaf switch now your aci infrastructure or aci uh, solutions is very very clever very very smart right so this smart guy one Set it over smart guy 2, smart guy 3, smart guy 4. They are the super smarts. Super smart 2. Right? So leaf spine architecture, he will receive this packet, right? And he will look into this packet. Alright. What is the destination Mac? And apart from that, he will check his own table. See, uh, this uh, this SCI infrastructure behavior is to us check his own endpoint table, whether it is there or not. So then he, it will uh, wrap out the uh, uh, the cover of the IP header also. From there, 
what it will do it will check the destination ip right so once it uh, get the destination ip what he will do as he is very very smart and we have uh, a disable the uh, our flooding he will not flood at all or this smart guy will say don't flood anything right so what he will do he will send this super smart guy right i don't know the destinations please give me solutions so what he will do he will look up his own database right coop database or spine proxy database or global database any anything you can could say right now you might think how this guy will know the super smart how he is know once this host to gets connected to this uh, uh, this uh, super uh, uh, this uh, smart for uh, leaf right he will his responsibility to uh, report the same in point informations to spine right so this is how the spine uh, get to know the destination mac address detail over here now once this uh, uh, so, uh, spine switch come to know the destination ip and he having the informations this is the destination ip which is belongs to this tape address right uh, smart for uh, switch tape address what he will do he will forward the traffic to this guy right excellent so this is how uh, cisco sci handle uh, the our broadcast right it's very similar to unknown unicast right whatever is unknown that will also broadcast but here the uh, cisco lip switch handle uh, this is how they handle they don't allow any broadcast now another another advantage of the our broadcast of uh, spine uh, disabling that is if you if you are disabling or enabling whatever it is in that case it it reads the l3 header right ip it understand the ip then what he will do it is l3 request that's what in this case our glean will work right our glean will work if it if you having any any uh, l3 uh, uh, host which is uh, sleeping or he is silent he is not responding in that case if it is as it's a l3 as i told you earlier also that in l3 uh, l3 arp glean is work very well now if you uh, enable the arp uh, uh, broadcast what it will do it will broadcast within the bridge domain right and if you are uh, disable right uh, uh, the arp broadcast in that case it will go to spine proxy and spine proxy handle this stuff and if if any if you having any uh, uh, silent host in that case also uh, spine will generate one arp glen request to detect the silent host right so this is how basically arp being handled by the spine right or uh, rather uh, lip spine architecture aci infrastructure hope it is uh, informative to you right so this is how it's work if you are uh, enabling then it will broadcast as traditional network right within the uh, broadcast domain and if you are disabling it goes to spine proxy because switch says don't broadcast we don't uh, underestimate any broadcast give it to me let me go to uh, send it to uh, my super smart guy he will take care right so this is how uh, uh, this our uh, request being handled by the sci infrastructure hope it is uh, clear right i uh, if you are enjoying this video please share with others also right mm. now uh, it's it's is very much clear to you here is the option as i told you the uh, check and uncheck box over here and if i missed out anything uh, in that case i will uh, add in in next uh, next onwards uh, subsequent slides right so what we have done unicast routing right let me take the uh, different color all right unicast routing l3 unknown unicast it's unknown then it's a purely broadcast again then we have uh, completed the our uh, flooding right and more deep i will definitely discuss uh, in subsequent slide and uh, now we'll discuss the l3 uh, unknown multicast right now uh let me draw again the same architecture leaf and spine here i will explain how this multi uh, multicast being handled by the sci leaf spine architecture right 
so these are the uh, leaf switches right which is uh, connected to the spine with uh, crisscross manners kind of yeah right so yes uh, this is spine super smart guy spine 2 right this is uh, leaf 1 smart guy leaf 2 leaf 3 and leaf 4 <coughs> now here uh, we will understand how uh, the CA handle the uh, multicast already uh, we uh, have some idea about the multicast right so in, in uh, leaf 1 we are having one uh, host right with uh, XYZ IP right and in leaf 4 there is another host is connected right that is XYY something like that right <coughs> here how uh, uh, a CI multicast being handled uh, it, it, it is also so possible if, if any multicast goes to leaf and leaf what will do it will broadcast to everywhere right everywhere but thing is that as we are using a uh, smart guys over here right so uh, it's it's not expected that we are going to use such kind of uh, uh, multi uh, forwarding right to the other other leaves so what we are expecting as we have seen in earlier also right like uh, uh, it's goes to we are expecting it should goes to uh, spine right and the spine will decided where to send now uh, here in this uh, SCI, how they do uh, handle the multicast? They do use the FTAC tree concept, right? So FTAC, what is FTAC tree? FTAC tree is nothing but forwarding tag, right? Let me. Here they are using FTAC tree. Now, wh what is the FTAC tree? Any request? Let me uh, draw over here any request uh, goes to this uh, uh, spine switch what the pan switch will do it will forward here here the leaf 4 and from here it will send to the spine again right so this uh, uh, spine switch is not using other link right if you see he has not used any other link right so he has travel with whatever the available any of the link to forward now how the aptek tree works here in cisco sci they do use a uh, 12 aptek uh, uh, tree right what is aptek uh, 12 aptek tree uh, like a uh, similar to spine uh, stp uh, protocol kind of here in spine it will be uh, used as a root who will take the responsibility to forward to the other uh, 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 leaf switches right now here uh, this leaf switch uh, the spine switch will received uh, this multicast and it will uh, forward to the other uh, uh, leaf switches now what will happen after uh, sending it to the leaf switches this leaf switch there uh, before that let me uh, tell you one thing uh, in this uh, multicast option you will get two options right under this uh, l3 multicast you will get flood right and optimized flood so we'll discuss first the about the flood so if, if you are selecting the uh, uh, flood in that case what will happen it will goes to uh, uh, spine and spine will flood to other uh, uh, leaf switches under that leaf switches uh, they will also forward each port whatever the port he having uh, though there is no any host or uh, querier is uh, or uh, requester is not available right everywhere he will flood if we choose the flood option but here a little bit uh, tricky over there in cisco first generation slip switches what they do they do flood definitely where they do flood wherever the querier they come to over here then this guy this lift switch forward to every port as this leaf switch for having one querier right one, one requester and it will not forward other other ports but from uh, second generations 
or uh, second generation onwards lip switches what they do it's it's uh, changed it what it will do it will flow everywhere like a, like a broadcast terminology it will broadcast everywhere from the uh, next generation uh, lip switches right so if you choose the flood it will flood now thing is that one request comes to uh, to spine sw lip switch right now how this lip switch will decide which which uh, 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 spine switch he has to send this multicast traffic for that they use the hashing right they use the hashing once this request comes to the multicast request comes to the leaf one they use the hashing and using that hashing they use 12 f tech tree now what is 12 f tech tree if you having two separate spine switch over there like it is it, it, it is categorized one three five seven then nine then eleven right now here it will be planned from two four six eight and twelve now if any request sends to a multicast request sends to spine a leaf switch sorry it's my bad leaf switch then leaf switch or run the hashing and on that suppose it's it's after running the hashing it's decide sends to the uh, 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 root to number seven so what it will do the seven is here in this spine right then what it will do it will send this guy and the smart over smart guy i would say this this uh, super smart guy will send every uh, sends to other other leaf switches right and the last lip switch responsibility to send again to the spine one right so this is how uh, it's 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 work now another part over here that is like why we are sending another spine this is very another uh, important part because if you having any multi pod uh, scenario multi uh, data center scenario in that case using this lip switch if, if any data center interconnected with your this spine switch with other data center in that case to send this multicast to that data center it will say use this spine switch to send that broadcast right so that's what this live switch sends this multicast traffic to uh, spine 2 right so this is how uh, they uh, use but now option if we choose the flood this uh, this this is how it's work but thing is that we don't require this much of flood right all are unnecessary all are uh, utilize your uh, resources uh, unwanted congestion it is uh, increasing right and that is not expected in a smart network right intelligent network uh, we don't expect such kind of uh, flood now in that case another option we have optimized flood right so if we choose the uh, optimized uh, flood in that case what will happen in that case as we know right as we know there is uh, no uh, no uh, broadcast going to happen each each uh, 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 leaf switches in that case what will happen it will send the similar way to the spine the, the user is not going to send this leaf switch going to send to the spine right and the spine use the same concept like uh, uh, igmp snooping what it will do if it, if it is check that if there is any querier any requester is there or not if then only it will send to that particular lip switches right it's get optimized right the same as a igmp uh, snooping because this guy this this uh, receiver is query send a query or send a request always right for the uh, multicast access then it sends then its uh, uh, request goes to leaf uh, uh, 4 then leaf 4 sends that particular port because from here only the queries get generated this is how we can optimize the multicast traffic right so if you choose this option will such kind of uh, situation will get and keep in uh, mind the aptech tree work like a, a root and uh, leaves kind of uh, concept they always uh, the spine switch will be as a root and they use a 12 aptech tree right and, uh, and the, that aptech tree will uh, decide where to send during uh, whatever the option we are choosing right any multicast traffic can come to a leaf switch and this leaf switch uh, take the decision based on the selection your selection whatever you select right hope it is uh, informative right makes sense 
if you are enjoying please uh, keep a uh, like button all right yeah now we understand how it's uh, uh, the the l3 uh, multicast get handle by this lip switch there is as i told you right we have two options flood and optimized flood right but thing is that uh, as i told you optimized flood is very similar to igmp snooping for that you have to uh, make some changes in the other configuration what is the changes let me show you here uh, uh, you have to change these configurations you have to enable this, uh, this 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 igmp snooping policy right here you have to come you have to enable and you have to enable the querier so that querier can have some queries to that leaf switches right for the for the multicast uh, traffic access right hope it is uh, clear right all right so uh, now uh, last option left that is multicast destination flooding let me explain that also right now <clears throat> what is a multicast destination flooding multi destination it's not multicast it's a multi destinations right uh, so if in case this uh, all these uh, all these options can control uh, your packet the last option uh, with this option we can uh, manage the multicast broadcast right so in a multi destination flooding there is uh, three option we are going to get right one is the flood in bd second one is the drop third one is the flood encapsulant if if other options not uh, take care unable to take care your uh, multicast broadcast uh, unicast or non unicast right then this multi destination flooding come in picture with the three options now what will happen if you choose the flood bd the flood bd will broadcast within your bridge domain everywhere it will broadcast in every port right everywhere within your bridge domain if we choose this option now what will happen if we choose the option drop drop is nothing it will drop if this guy is not take care then it will be drop right hope it is uh, clear right uh, enjoy this video now uh, here if we choose the flood in uh, encapsulation what will happen in that case in first option it will flood within your bridge domain broadcast domain but if you choose flood encapsulation in that case it will the flood within your encapsulation vlan with your traditional vlan whatever you have configured there it will flood right so this three option you are going to get uh, to to control your uh, multi uh, destination flooding so here as i told you again as i told you this sci infrastructure bit clever bit intelligent more than you think that's what this is how they control their multicast broadcast and the unicast even the r flooding also because see i, I have also uh, told you because don't underestimate any broadcast right in the data center you have to take care all the broadcast multicast unicast right and this is how a ci uh, infrastructure handle the bomb traffic right broadcast unknown unicast and multicast right so i uh, hope you understand the forwarding all the forwarding mode which comes under the bridge domain right uh, which we select during our forwarding and this is how the bomb traffic being handled by your aci network right so let's go to the next slide now where we are again we are in the same position from where we started right we found the answer the fast questions right what if the spine proxy don't know the destination in that case it will uh, uh, do arc clean and for that uh, we have to understand the all the forwarding component already we understand along the all the forwarding component right and the forwarding mode also now uh, this questions how decide uh, the send all to the spine proxy right we are sending to spine proxy but how we are deciding you might get some picture uh, clarity but that might be a bit hazy let me uh, more clarity on that by following one flow structure right one of the flow manners 
let's understand that one also right all right so first here you can see one lip switch cisco aci lip switch where one host is get connected right from here the entire uh, situations st get start right so first what will happen first the spine proxy happen in three uh, situations first is the l2 l3 or any r for the any r request in three scenario mostly a uh, spine proxy get happen right or require or we do choose right so once this uh, packet uh, comes to uh, from any host to uh, a switch in that case we have to understand whether it is l2 or l3 request right now how do we understand whether it is l2 or l3 if this packet come to a leaf front panel uh, interface with uh, the packet which is not our default gateway mac address in that case it will be treated as a l2 traffic likewise i uh, uh, before a few minutes ago or uh, in a previous slide i have explained if it is l2 unknown unicast so it is mentioning the l2 unknown unicast so any l2 uh, traffic could come so first i will consider as first l2 traffic so we are considering first one request comes to our lip switch that is the l2 what will happen and how we will choose the spine proxy right all right now uh, we are assuming it's a l2 now if it is l2 then what will happen one questions would be come in between that is the leaf knows the destination mac address right whether yes or no we have to answer in our case leaf don't know the destination mac address right leaf don't know the destination mac address that's what it is l2 unknown unicast or any l2 packet if the answer is no if my leaf is don't know even uh, our scenario was uh, no in the spine proxy scenario right in that case what will happen if it is no then question will come that what is the bd config bd config says what we have chosen the option what option we have chosen uh, in the under the bd right what is the options as i show you the l2 under the l2 unknown unicast flood and hardware proxy there is two option only and how it's work i have already told you right now in our case we have chosen the hardware proxy once we choose the option hardware proxy it will automatically go to the spine proxy right so what happened it's l2 uh, traffic it uh, come to uh, hit to uh, your uh, lip switch right the first question come whether lib uh, look up this lib uh, look up his own uh, table right endpoint table whether it is present or not there the destination mac if it is not there in our case it's not there then answer is no if it is not what the bd is configure we have chosen right so we have uh, selected the option hardware proxy right so if we select the option hardware proxy it's mean we are selecting we are we are instructing our bd we are instructing to our l2 unknown unicus to treat as a hardware proxy for spine proxy so it will go to spine proxy now what will happen after receiving this uh, packet by the fine spine switch right there is uh, two option it will get it will check spine coop dev already i told you it will check spine coop dv spine proxy dv or center gst global station table whatever it is you can call the dv it will check whether this uh, uh, l2 uh, is there or not right if it is there it will send if it is not there it will drop right in previous slide if you remember i told you in for the l2 traffic there is no arp glean mechanism whether it knows whether it's able to look up then it forward the remote leaf right if it is known now it will drop for the l2 traffic there is no treatment it will prepare uh, properly drop the packet it will not do any unknown uh, arp glean right uh, for the uh, silent host detections right perfect so i uh, hope uh, uh, you uh, understand makes sense right now what about the l3 when we understand it's a l3 topic if any packet comes to our leaf switch and that packet header destination is our gateway that is will be that that will be treated as a l3 packet all right 
so it is querying for the l3 request or any any l3 request comes uh, to the switch what will it do it will l3 and it will uh, come uh, to your lip switch it, the lip switch will receive this l3 packet and lift lip will ask the leaf uh, knows the destination ip as endpoint right and there is two option do you know leaf, leaf uh, knows the destination ip as a uh, endpoint right in our case what is that no no now in this situation in this situation you might think that our uh, uh, source knows the destination ip then why are you saying no right i'm saying no because see your uh, host knows the destination ip definitely your source know because already you told him right that's what you know but your leave done don't know he has to learn right for your leap it is then that, that's what i'm saying uh, it's no leave don't know the destination as ap right so if it is don't if, if this leap switch don't know uh, in that case what will happen it will check the leaf has the bd subnet or not in the bridge domain we, uh, we configure the subnet right and we uh, check the far bc route right already i told you whatever the subnet we are configured that is a uh, permissive gateway and permissive route also here the permissive route is uh, needed you understand right it's needed otherwise how it will uh, go to spine proxy for the destinations it follows the route then if it is there yes in our case uh, yes then what will do it will go to spine proxy right so here please recap again uh, leaf has bd subnet for the destination ip yes we have configure and we have the uh, route also but we don't know the where is the destinations it will then it will go to the destinations right leave don't know the destination but we have the permissive route that's what it goes to a uh, spine proxy definitely now after receiving the spine proxy what it will do right but before that let me uh, clarify another uh, part over here l3 topic that is fine but another scenario there is there i have mentioned that is the third scenario in our request also it state as a l3 traffic even though it is uh, technically l2 why it is l3 uh, treated over here because it is uh, uh, that uh, it will open that header and from there it will understand the destinations and it will check whether it is uh, uh, being known by the lip switch if it is not known then the same way it will treat as a l3 traffic it will go to uh, a leaf if it is don't know the endpoint then it will go to uh, the permissive route it will check the permissive route from there if it uh, uh, the destination don't know but permissive route is there then it will go to spine proxy right now spine proxy after receiving what it will do right spine check the coop db uh, one mistake uh, it please consider this uh, thing as a uh, destination ip not a destination mac address right please consider it now and onwards right if he knows it will forward the leaf if it is don't know what it will do drop first packet and start the arc lane right i have uh, clarified the same thing in earlier also that for the l3 traffic arc lane is done for the l2 topic there is no such art glean happen right all right hope you can understand this situation this flow now <clears throat> here you might think uh, uh, that yes uh, for the spine proxy it's very much clear to us but what about other option like if leaves knows the destination in that case answer would be yes in that case where, where the pack, uh, traffic will go right and even for the l3 topic if leaves knows the destination ip as bd if it is yes answer is yes where the topic will go right and the leaf bd subnet is not configured what will happen in that case right the full architecture you should know right the full flow where is the full flow this is the uh, flow, uh, full entire uh, flow architecture not only a spine proxy over here now try to understand let me uh, clarify this part if it is l2 it goes to uh, leaf knows the destination if this leaves having his endpoint table what it will do it will goes the destination mac on leaf or not if it that if, if, if the destination mac on local leaf what it will do it will forward to the local port 
and if it is uh, if it is not present in a, a local endpoint table it will present in the remote endpoint table in that case it will forward to the remote leaf very easy very easy and and uh, if i choose the flood what will happen it will flood within the vd right and here also leaf if leaves knows if this uh, this uh, routing uh, uh, or l3 destination knows by the leaf what will happen it goes to the one questions following this questions is the destination ip local leaf or remote leaf if it is local leaf then it will forward to the local leaf port right if it is nearby and if it is a uh, uh, remote it will send to the remote re following the remote endpoint table right <coughs> uh, and if it is uh, 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 there in spine uh, for the spine proxy if it is there it will uh, forward if it is not there it will start for the arc lane right and arc lane is by default it you cannot disable it out for the l3 topic again it is recommended if you are having uh, uh, most of the silent host and most of the communication l2 please go with the flood right and if you have the uh, some less silent host and that is also in l3 then go for the spine proxy which which optimize your uh, flooding right which more uh, more uh, optimize your entire flood system right hope uh, this uh, uh, information is uh, much for you uh, i would recommend follow uh, this uh, flow with this flow you can understand uh, each and every part of the uh, forwarding uh, component and how it's get forward and you can answer every questions right so uh, yes uh, here is the situation from here always try to compare take this uh, snip and from here try to understand it is it is a layer two traffic this is your layer two traffic if you leave knows what it will do it will forward if you don't know it will forward to spine and spine will check and it will if you check his own db if it is there it will send to the exact type address right hope you enjoy the entire video do like uh, subscribe and share others uh, so that it can be helpful for others also right now uh, our next uh, scenario would be uh, the fourth scenario i will cover out right uh, the source leaf don't know uh, the destination and it will be the flood scenario right hope it is informative thank you thanks for your time and in, in short there is no possibilities to uh, gather knowledge right if you want to uh, learn something you have to spend time yeah thanks for your time